hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, it looks to me like it's a bit cold out there for them lads working in the yard. Bloody hell. Snowing. Snow in February. I always get stuck in the snow. One thing about Mercs, the crap in the snow aren't they? Look how slow he's going down there. Oh god, I hope we don't crash on way on. But, uh, anyway, I hope everybody's doing alright. Let me uh, just shut these. Uh, that's a bit of sun, bit of sunlight coming through there. I might need to get my porky shades out. Uh, well, fight posters are done, tickets are going like hot cakes. Like. Like, like my mother didn't used to make. Only joking, mum. Uh, right. So these are the fight posters. If anybody wants any of these, I'll uh, you come and get them off me if you want. I'll come up to my office and I'll give you some. Uh, I'm gonna go see Richard Towers in a couple of hours. Cash Alley. Uh, Cash Ali's fighting that Sandler. It's a good fight, that. Josh is in a good fight. Look, let me just let me just get a few things off my chest here with people emailing me, cos people like to have a pop and I like to have a pop myself if there's something I don't agree with. Uh, Josh Wales should have been fighting the kid whose name I can't pronounce begins with T. He should have been fighting that kid from France, right? A purse was agreed. When I was told how much the purse was, I nearly collapsed. I was like, wow. Uh, so a purse was agreed. The team agreed it, the people in France. And then they came back wanting more money a period later. Now, Josh is already training for the kid. They're wanting more money. So what do you do? Do you pull the show? And the, when you pull a show, all these people on the show here, I mean, how many fights have we got here? One, two. All the people on the show get let down and they have opponents, they get let down, they have a team that they've been training for, they all let get they all get let down. It has a knock on effect, it's awful. So we've managed to get Josh in with a kid. And you know it's a good fight. So you've got to make most of a bad job. Josh and him will fight, Josh will beat him, he'll be 4-0 with us then, that's undefeated in four fights in under one year in under a year so I think that's brilliant I think that's brilliant Josh sat in that chair with his dad in April and uh, had his first fight with us in June so and I'm proud to say I'm a part of it and um, he's had a good career but this is the last leg of his career and it's all looking good for Josh everything's looking rosy and I'm over the moon uh, but let's just get the fight done next week you get over the line. Keenan Wainwright's in a good fight. Perry Howe's in a good fight. They're all in good fights. The the German girl that's come over, who's trained by Richard Towers, uh, she's in a good fight as well. So it's all good, positive stuff. I hope everybody likes me. Uh, my new jeans. I've got that motocross feel to them. I'm not exactly man at CNA. But uh, other than that, I'm all right. I'm happy. I'm in a good place. That's when I get this show out of the way. Then we can plot routes for these kids moving forward. Uh, I hope everybody's been watching uh, IFL lately. Keep watching. Keep watching it. And. Uh, Shall I get that in over office? Can't talk when the phone's ringing, can you? Hello? 
Hello? For the what? Coach driver, uh, you'll have to speak to uh, Dennis or David. Dennis is not here and David's in the yard at the moment. Can you leave a number and I'll get him to ring you back? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Go on, read it out. Yeah. Yeah. Five what? Five double four double four. Three six nine ten. That's eleven numbers. Yeah, what's your name? Pardon? James who? Did you say James May? As in Top Gear James May? James Mate? <laughs> right. Okay, uh, well I'll give that to, to David in the next 10 minutes or something. I'll give it to Michelle and she'll give it me. She's just gone on a dinner, Michelle. Alright? Thank you very much. You take care. Bye bye. Uh, so, so basically, basically what, what, uh, what's going on is the show's next week. It is what it isn't. And I hope all you hardcore boxing fans who keep emailing me and leaving messages on YouTube telling me that you're hardcore I hope that you're all going to come down on the night obviously I've invited some people if you've not been invited by me it's because I don't know you but I hope you come down on the night buy a ticket it's only 40 quid buy a ticket and help support these kids on this show because you know all these kids on this show they're not big YouTube stars like all these people that are going on these events that oh he's a YouTube star he's famous he's got a following he can't fight for Toffee but we're going to put gloves on him and we're going to give him a license to fight now these kids are not got massive profiles but what they have got is they've got heart and will and they're putting the time in these kids are putting the time in how do you think fighters right feel when they see these people getting pay-per-views on Sky and they're coming from other countries it's not good is it nobody's gonna say a word though because the managers want to work with these people look they know what it is we know what it is Liam Smith came out Joe Gallagher came out and they had a pop didn't they that Logan Paul KSI event we know what it is and it's wrong for boxing it's wrong but it's how it's going isn't it look, all I want to see in boxing is good fights I want to see the good fights but they don't seem to be happening, do they? What fights are happening? What what fights are happening? Fury, is that going to happen? He's saying him and Joshua's got to happen in America. That means that it's never going to happen. If Joshua fought Tyson Fury in America, what does that say about British boxing? British boxing's booming. Rough, tough, rugged. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Rough, tough, rugged. Bean. Run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been. Bait bean. Beanie. Creepy bean. Magic bean. Green beans. Look, this is how I look at it. British boxing could be better. People are coming in from all, all walks of life now into boxing and companies are being set up to look after it, every, to look after fighters. Look, everybody wants a piece of the action. But fights have got to be made. Kell Brook against BP Smith is a great fight. Question mark if it's pay-per-view. If it is, it's probably a £10 pay-per-view. It's not a 25 quid pay-per-view. But it could be pay-per-view with right card. But I want to see... Beefy Smith in a world title fight. I don't want to see him in an eliminator. Him and Kel's got to be for a belt, on it? It's got to be. I don't want to see any more of these trinket belts. I don't want to see that. What I want to see are fighters getting good fights. But the main thing is I want to see fighters getting paid on time. Fighters getting paid on time is a big thing for me. I want to see Billy Joe Saunders. I want to see him in a great fight. I don't want to see any more of this politics and... You know, we're not going to get the Canelo fight. It's probably not going to happen, but we move on. I don't want to hear that, because all we've heard for the last four months is 
Billy Joe's going to happen with Canelo. I mean, they even told that Rob Tebbit, didn't they? And he was running around saying, Billy Joe and Canelo is probably going to happen in May. Well, we're in February now, and it's not, it's not signed and sealed. So what's happening with that? People need to get the fingers out. That fight needs to be made. Now, Billy Joe's a multi-millionaire. He's multitasked. He's a masterful boxer, masterful. He doesn't get hit. Tyson Fury, does he get hit? Question mark. Masterful boxer, but he does get hit. He's been down, hasn't he? How many times has Tyson been down? How many? Is it four or five? If you're getting dropped like that, you've got a problem. You've got a problem if you're getting dropped. People, Otto Wallin didn't drop him, but he was hitting him, wasn't he? If you're getting hit off Otto Wallin, is there a problem if you're fighting John T. Wilder? There's a problem. There's a problem. So, but I just want to see great fights and people getting paid. The main thing is, fighters need to be getting paid now. Match do not pay your fighters on time, don't they? There's other companies that pay the fighters on time. There's people who don't pay them on time. If you're not getting paid on time, there's a problem. Because you want to be with people that are paying you, don't you? That I have a problem with. I don't want to be this renegade, this guy who goes up against the establishment. Because, you know, I can, sooner or later, you know, I'm going to get a knock on the door, aren't I? Somebody's going to say, we don't like what you're doing. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to have, probably going to have problems here. They're going to be going to Dennis to get to me. You know, so I try not to make it personal. I try to deal in facts. Now, so far, we've been going two year, three months. Two year, four months. And we tell the truth. Now, when you tell the truth, how can anybody have a pop at you? They can not like what you're saying. But when you tell the truth, people don't do, can't do anything, can they? They can make threats, but they can't do anything. Because the truth allows allows us to see what's going on. Now, but we're not boxing truthers here at Pop Poker's Corner. We're just calling it people out on the bull. S H I T. We're calling it out. We don't want no more bull. S H I T. I don't want to see it. I want to see good fights. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about chit chat and. I can't explain it now. What happened with Charlo against Billy Joe? What happened with that? Charlo, they were throwing his name about, weren't they, Eddie Earn? Whatever anybody says about Eddie Earn, he puts offers out, doesn't he? He puts an offer out that's crap. Nobody takes the offer and he goes out, well, we've put an offer out on all these gimps from Gimpville Island. It's a little island. Uh, in the middle of nowhere where these gimps live. They used to be casuals, then they were called super casuals. Now they're just called gimps from Gimpville Island. And these gimps who live on this little tiny island, they don't know anything outside of Matchroom, Sky Sports and IFL. They don't know anything outside of that little island. Because when you're told something, it's gospel. It's gospel. For example, People are told that Al Heyman hasn't got the money to offer Joshua X amount of millions to fight Wilder. Oh, he hasn't got the money. So that video goes out on a match and unboxing YouTube. It goes out on a Sky Sports and it goes out on IFL. And what happens then? These gimps who are beaming it on satellite down to Gimpville Island, they see it on the phone and they go, look. But uh, PBC haven't got the money to pay Joshua. What happens then? They spread it like wildfire. And each one of them's running loads of accounts. There might be a thousand of these gimps running 10 accounts each. That's 10,000 tweets, 10,000 comments, 10,000 likes. But then when somebody else counteracts it, you've got 10,000 comments against that and 10,000 dislikes. And all the graphs keep going up and up and everybody's keep going down and down. What happens then? We have a divide. 
we have Eddie Hearn earning a million a week and Frank Warren earning whatever he's earning. Go on, company house, it's all there. Eddie Hearn's always shouting about company house, isn't he? he earned, what did he earn last year? 45 times more than what Frank earned. What it on company house or whatever it were. So that that's his nearest rival, so it's domination, isn't it? And I don't like it when it's like that, when somebody's dominating. I was behind Eddie years ago and then I didn't like how it went after Frotch Groves finished. I didn't like what we were being fed, these narratives and these scripts. Oh, it's a great story. What about can that person fight? Forget the story or if they do numbers. Listen, Jimmy Carr, that comedian, does numbers on YouTube. Are they going to put a pair of boxing gloves on Jimmy Carr next? I mean, what next? Prince Harry, is he going to turn pro? Is he going to fight... I don't know. Is Prince Harry going to fight Frank Smith from Matchroom or Richie Rich? We don't know, do we? Anything's possible. Eddie Hearn's talking about Jamie Vardy's missus against Wayne Rooney's missus. Who wants to see that? Are these people that desperate with the zone? I don't know. But what I do know is this. Big fights are not being made. Frotch Karzaghi won't made. Kel Brook against Amir Khan. Kel Brook's been with Eddie Hearn nine years. Nine year. And how many top wins has Kel Brook got in that nine year? How many? How many wins? One. He's got one win. One win. One win. I mean, what's all that about? Eh? He beat Sean Porter. Squeaked by Sean Porter. Well, let me tell you this. If he fights Beefy Smith, Kel Brook, I want Kel Brook to win. Because I'm from South Yorkshire. I want him to win. I'm not a big lover of Kel Brook's trainer. He's the first weapon of the week winner, as you will have noticed if you check on my channel. I'm not a big lover of his trainer. But one thing he does know about is nutrition and getting people to lose weight. So I give him credit for that, but I'm not a big lover of him. I don't like what he stands for. He's a boxing trainer, not a promoter. If he wants to be a promoter, start putting shows on. Dip your toe into the pocket. Go out and pay X amount to get your fighters on TV. Go do all that, but I am not a big lover of his trainer. But Beefy Smith... I think beats Kel Brook. I think Beefy Smith out toughs Kel Brook. I think he out toughs him. I think if it gets tough in there, I think Kel Brook's wanting. But I also know that Kel Brook's very strong in the clinches. Very good technically, technically, but I think Kel Brook's past his sell by date. I don't think Liam Smith is. And I think this fight should be called the pension fight. It should be sponsored by Scottish Widows Pensions. Should, it's another crawler job, isn't it? It's another, well, he deserves a good send-off fight. Kel's not going to fight in Sheffield again. Kel Brook will fight in Sheffield again when Eddie Hearn's done with him, because he'll always be a boxer. There's always a, there's always a door open for Kel Brook here, if it don't work out with Eddie Hearn. So, he'll fight on Free Sports TV. It could be face of free sports but once you've been earning that kind of money you don't want to step down do you so we're going to see where, where, where Kel Brook's career goes but I've got Beefy Smith to beat him I've got Wilder to knock Tyson Fury out I'm not going to sit here and say well Wilder knockout or Fury points can people have an opinion and grow a pair stop hiding people keep hiding and you don't want to say it because it's not PC. Grow a pair. It's not hard to grow a pair, but just grow a pair. But the main thing is, I've got love in my heart for all boxers. That's the main thing. Speaking of great matchups, I'd like to see Tyrone Nurse against Anthony Tomlinson. That's what I'd like to see. I think that's a great fight. Why not? That same weight. You know, people are saying Tyrone Nurse has 
maybe his best days are gone. Uh, people are saying Anthony Tomlinson's the next big thing at well to eight. He's coming through. Is he 12 and 0? Has he stopped, what, eight or nine of them? So he's knocking people out. That's what you should be doing. So if he's next big thing, Anthony Tomlinson, I want to see him against Tyrone Nurse. I mean, that's a great fight. I want to see him against a loser, a Conor Ben against that Johnny Garton, is it? Garland, Garton. I want to see him in with somebody better than the guy he's just beat, but he can only beat who's in front of you. But if he's the next big thing, that's what I want to see. Uh, he's just fought a British title eliminator, so he's probably going to go British title route, but that's what I want to see. I want to see Tyrone Nurse getting mixed. I want to see. I don't want people to forget Tyrone Nurse because he had a British title. So, and I don't think his best days are behind him yet, but we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. I think Darren Tetley's a good fight against uh, Anthony Tomlinson. I think that's a good fight. But it's all very interesting at the moment, boxing, but I want to see great fights. That's all I want to see. I want to see Gav McDonald against Josh Whale. I mean, Gav McDonald was sent in Texas asking Dennis if, if he's got any featherweights who he can beat up on. We've only got one featherweight and we've gone quiet since then. Gavin, you've gone quiet. So... Oh, I might be able to, I might get in trouble for saying that. Oh God, how dare I? All these people sent telling tales to border control. Naughty, naughty! You know who you are. We know the person that told tales to border control, but it's all good, isn't it? I don't have a license. I haven't got a board license, so I can do what I want. Shout out Charlie Giles. How you doing, Charlie? Hope you're well. We'll have to have a few whiskeys, Charlie, again, won't we? Good old Charlie Giles, top bloke. Put his time in with board, hasn't he? Big cheese at WBC as well, Charlie. Hope you're well. Charlie loves a night out. What a jack! What a guy he is. What a setup! What a setup it is at the British Boxing Board of Control. The great people. And that's what you need in boxing, don't you? Great people. Look, look, look out for each other that look out for each other. Great people. Friends to the end, aren't they? It's friends to the end, isn't it? You know, like Chucky in that film. Andy, friends to the end. Well, that's my relationship with British Boxing Board of Control. Friends to the end. You go in front of them, and they're all there on a the table, and you're there, and you're thinking, oh my God. It's like, hey, going on a nicking on a Sunday morning, in prison, you know when you go up in front of the governor and they're all there on that big long table and you stood there and you just know that you're going to get 28 days block, no canteen, blah de blah you stood there and you're thinking, well all I'm going to be allowed to buy at my canteen now is paper and I'm going to lose all my privileges, so I'm going to be stuck in block a month here you stood looking at them all, well I was like that when I went in front of them all it was like an old boys brigade, I thought it's like being in front of Ed Master, do you know what I mean? But anyway, good luck to Border Control. They've got they've got a lot on the plate, haven't they? It's usually salmon in it and asparagus. What they've got on their plate, or a big old steak, you know, or the Last Supper. That's what they've got on their plate. But other than that, I'm all right. Roll on the show next week. Roll on Josh Whale doing the business. Top fighter, top bloke. People who want to take up boxing need to go to Mickey's Athletic. To Swinton Way, Mexbra S64. Get you sent down to Mickey's Athletic. They do a mini Outlaws on a Sunday morning as well. If you've got young kids, you know, between ages of, I think it's is it five or six up to ten. Got a good thing going there. You know, it, it's, it's all good. I've been down with my little girl and it's a good setup. But that's where you need to be if you need to take up boxing. There's other gyms in the area. Boxing's thriving, so we keep being told. Boxing's booming. But Fury Wilder rematch is in America again. Fury's not fought in England since he fought Pianetta. Pianetta. Joshua's not fought in England since he fought who? Povetkin, was it? And how old were Povetkin? Then, 
I mean, Povetkin's 42 years of age next year. Dillian White, as I predicted, and I told you all, shook up the world! I shook up the world, I shook up YouTube. I told you all that Dillian White were going to fight Povetkin. And now you've got people like Hatman doing videos on social media saying, do you know what, Povetkin's a better fighter than Ruiz. How is Povetkin a better fighter than Ruiz? He's 10 years older, more than 10 years older. He's more than 10 years older. What is Ruiz, 30? Povetkin's 41, isn't he? In a couple of months. So he's 42 next year. So he's more than 10 years older. Povetkin only had a regular belt. So how's his CV better? He only had a regular belt. Ruiz had four belts. He was a unified world champion, all proper belts. And he beat the guy that beat Povetkin. So how is Ruiz's CV worse than Povetkin's? I mean, what are these people like Hatman? And we know, all, we know who the other gimps are, don't we? What are these people spinning? What narrative are they spinning? What? Andy Ruiz has got a worse CV than Povetkin. Oh, it just so happens that Dillian White's provide, fighting Povetkin. We've got Povetkin, a two-time drug cheat, and Dillian White, who were innocent on one, and the other one were a mistake. That's, well, that's what we're told. But if you, the other side of the coin is a two-time drug cheat, but Povetkin's denying his two, two uh, marks against him, and so is Dillian White, so... One's an over-the-counter substance. They're all over-the-counter substances. You've got to buy them from somewhere. Everything's over-the-counter. So, now you're going to have them all wheeled out. Now, Povetkin's really up for this. And do you know what, Coogan? I've got a squeaky bum about Povetkin. He's really up for this. He's even running in the morning. Look. We're going to be fed narratives. They're going to wheel Johnny Nelson out. They're going to wheel B. They're going to wheel B now. They're going to wheel Coogan Cassius out on IFL. They're going to wheel them all out. But I'm going to tell you straight, Andy Ruiz is a tougher fight for Dillian White. And it's Dillian White's fifth, his fifth pay-per-view. And if you want to know, if you want to know about a detailed breakdown from somebody now, go and go to UC TV Boxing. UC TV Boxing. Give this kid a follow because this kid's better than me. He's behind the camera by the way. I'm in front of the camera and mine just comes out of my head. I've got no filter. He's behind the camera so he's probably reading something. If I were behind the camera I'd probably be reading it to get it so you're gonna get it nailed on. You can just be like that with camera pointing pointing that way or just click a picture up on your screen and you can just read and it sounds perfect. I'm in front of the camera but this kid's nailed it right. Go and listen to his breakdown. He gives you dates and times and explains to you that the fights and the emails and the press releases and all that and he nails it spot on that Dillian White has not, oh, he's not, who has he, who has he beat? Lucas Brown. Come on. Lucas Brown. Parker. Who would Parker beat? Yeah, he beat Ruiz, but everybody knows Ruiz beat him. The Parker one were a life and death for Dillian, and I give him credit for that fight, let me tell you, because I said it weren't pay-per-view and it were a fight at year. That were a fight at year candidate, that. But as I've just said to you now, Dillian White's like in his fifth pay-per-view against a guy who's 42 next year. That's the truth. Povetkin's 42 next year. And it is Dillian's fifth pay-per-view. And he's not even mentioned Caballel, Ortiz, Debar, Joyce. He's dismissed Andy Ruiz. He knocked the Joshua fight back. He knocked Brazil fight back. And he pulled out of the Pulef one where Pulef's team won the purse bid. And I know that because I spent some time with Pulef's team in Bulgaria with Peter Fury. So that's the cold hard fact. Dillian White's... Just for Oscar Rivers, I'd never heard of him. Obviously, I've seen him on rankings, but I've never watched his fights. And he's fighting Povetkin next, who lost to AJ. He's fighting a guy who lost to AJ and drew with uh, Michael Hunter. 
Michael Hunter fighted him in better for Dillian White, and Dillian White looked awful in his last fight and overweight. Now, what is happening with Dillian White's career? The guy's a multi-millionaire, but it looks to me like he's the stopgap guy for Matchroom. He's there to stop any, to block sort of certain things and just a hole filler. A bit like Gabe Rosado. I mean, they had Gabe Rosado on a Sky show after the event and everybody had gone home. They threw him on at end. I mean. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>